Well, Sweden has given us so many things. Vikings, Ikea, the Volvo, but none have been more fabulous and more enduring than ABBA. And what a wonderful welcome to Stockholm to be meeting Bjorn from ABBA. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Stockholm. I have to say, we have a long relationship, Australia and ABBA, yeah. and Australia and yeah. Sweden. How has it developed over the years and how do you reflect on it now? Well, I think... I, I, I'm still grateful to Australia because of the fact that when we had won in 74 with Waterloo, mm -hmm. we had a hard time getting back um, following Waterloo up. Mm. And it was only in Australia that we got traction with SOS and Mamma Mia. And then the, 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 the rest of the world sort of woke up. Mm. What's happening in Australia? And then, oh well, they're not a ha they're not a one-hit wonder after all. Right. So that was thanks to Australia. Well, and because that's always the stigma with Eurovision, uh, even now, it's the the one-hit wonder factor. Yeah. Well, uh, what do you think is the key that so many of the artists probably have missed out on that ABBA managed to do? What it, what it, what was it? Well, it's it is difficult. The follow-up is so important, and and you know, it's like people ha always assume that you're going to be a one-hit one wonder, mm. which makes it even more difficult to follow it up. Mm. So, and I, well, the only thing is that you have to, you know, your song has to be good enough, I guess. That's, that's, the that's a way. good start. That's, that's a, good a good start, start. yes. Well, you know, I mean, the first time you entered Ring Ring, that's one of my favourite songs. And that only, was it third? That came third, right? That came third in, in, in Sweden. Yes. But there was a kind of a... a expert jury of you know four or five people who voted so you were robbed <laughs> we were robbed of yeah. that victory but i'm glad we were because that year i think the final would have been in luxembourg or something yes and next year in 74 it was in brighton and that helped us a lot you mm -hmm. know launching mm -hmm. our career um, I want to know, I mean, it's 40, more than 40 years ago now, but, uh, you know, once you win and you do all the press and everything and there's the big hoo-ha, yeah. do you remember going to sleep after winning Eurovision, finally being by yourself? What do you remember thinking? Well, as you say, it was chaos, you yeah. know, afterwards. Um, and, uh, and before there was such tension that I... I just remember pacing up and down a corridor. Wow. And, and, and then Benny suddenly shouting, We've won! Because he, he, knew, he could calculate that we had won before, before the end. Yes. And then I was... So Benny was the mathematician of the group. He was the mathematician. <laughs> and then I remember a security guard stopping me when they asked the songwriters to go on stage. So Stig, and, Stig Anderson yes. and Benny Anderson, they were on stage. But the security guard stopped me, saying, thinking I was the artist. He, oh, I, because you yeah, were yeah, in yes, costume. exactly. I could, I could see what he was thinking. You know, that guy, he's not a songwriter. They don't look like that. <laughs> but you know, I mean, that's an interesting point. I mean, part of Abba's charm has been that you are so fun and so you know the colourful and sequins and everything. Yeah. But at the at its heart are these brilliantly written melodies and the chord progressions and the, the arrangements yeah. was that something that you always fought with being taken seriously in a, a bit making it accessible in the beginning we were not taken seriously yeah they just said this is they're all you know surface no, they're just shallow no depth and, yeah and uh and they they call us a hit factory and uh, like we had a formula or something but it took a few years but then we were you know people understood even the even the music critics understood that we were dead serious about our music was there one song in particular that you think was the turning point for that i think that um sos was kind of a turning point mm. um and and uh, then definitely with dancing queen right of yeah. course and yeah. af after that they um, um, they thought, you know, well, maybe there is something to them after all. Mm. They shouldn't be, but there, evidently, there is. <laughs> but also, I mean, that song as well, "Dancing Queen," the way the girls sing it. I mean, it's a huge range. Uh, why would you put anybody through that sort of torture? <laughs> 
because you have. Were you a you tyrant? No, no tyrant, but we <laughs> had access to two wonderful singers. Yes. One yes. being a soprano, one being a mezzo. Yeah. So we had that range, you know. Mm. Mm. Uh, so we could play around with that, and mm. we did several songs. Uh, we have a huge range and and I know that people find it difficult to sing and and uh, of course it is well I do a great version of it at karaoke I, I want you to know this yeah I'm, I'm sure you do yeah. but let's not have that now <laughs> <laughs> I won't put you through that. maybe later on tonight when we go to Mamma Mia of the party yes. now I, this is quite a phenomenon so you know I've we've all gone to see the movie I've I've seen the show on Broadway in yeah. in Australia and the reaction is always the same it's always a great big party yeah so now you've literally taken that element and turned it into a party what have, what's happened exactly that that was the idea put the uh, take the party from the musical and put it here in the restaurant uh, we're pretending that we're in Skopelos where um, most of the exteriors of Mamma Mia the movie were filmed yes and and we are pretending that there was a guy called Nikos uh, in Skopelos at that time and after the success of Mamma Mia uh, his wife and, and, and he came up with a wonderful idea to have a party every evening in his taverna. Yes. So that's what's taking place here. People eat wonderful Mediterranean Greek food, drink wine and between dishes they're treated to a little story in real time. Okay. Uh, between Nikos and, and his daughter and uh, all the people who work here. And there's a little conflict in the beginning that gets resolved towards the end and it ends with a big spectacular like um, Abba Medley which goes into a disco so it's a, it's a really a party evening okay so I, I'm interested to know that I, I remember being interested in Abba around 99 I think when the musical first came out mm -hmm. but you know, throughout the years, there's been these resurgence, obviously with Abba Gold, then the musical, and then when there's an anniversary of Waterloo. Essentially, it's still the same product coming out time and time again, but you have managed to repackage it and rebrand it and keep the fans interested. Obviously, yeah. you know, we've, we've been told there'll never be a reunion, but people are still happy with what you keep giving them. Is, uh, was that always kind of in the back of your mind? Not really. I mean, I've never thought about any kind of legacy or anything like that. It's just that these ideas have come up yeah. to, to write a musical backwards, um, you know, using existing songs. To me, that was a fantastic idea and a challenge mm. and an experiment. And when this idea came up, I thought, yeah, it could, it could be fun. See. Um, if I can realize that vision uh, and uh, I decided just go ahead and do it yeah. so and and now this is a huge success uh, yes. it sold out the whole year uh, we couldn't get a ticket so we were thrilled when we got the call from your PR people <laughs> yes uh, we're doing it in English this Eurovision week yes. and, and we do it in English in August for the tourists as well mm -hmm. but right now I'm on the lookout in uh, London for a place to do it there and Australia? Well, whatever goes down well in London goes down well in Australia, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, have you always considered yourself a businessman? I mean, you, you seem to be very involved in that side of it. Did you, was that interesting as well as the songwriting? No, it, it's not the business that, that's interesting here. It's uh, creating something. Yeah. Uh, so I've co-written the story and... and yes. I, I've, produce the whole thing so that's what I find interesting more than the business side okay before we go we want to know about Dami Im and your thoughts on Australia and Eurovision did you see her last night what did you think of her performance I actually make a point of not listening to anything before Saturday Really? Yeah. Old school. Yeah. I like so that. Old, old school because then, then I hear song after song fresh and I sort of pick my favorite. But someone uh, managed to play like 15 or 20 seconds of, of Dami yes. uh, the other day. And I could, I, I'm not saying anything about the song, but I can say that she's a fantastic singer. She absolutely is, yeah. as are you, as is your band. 
Bjorn, thank you so much. It has been my absolute pleasure to meet you, and we look forward to Mamma Mia! The Party in Australia. Yeah, why not? That would be fun. Thank you. Thank you.